Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. Rickshaw driver fourth victims of police killing in Karachi, Pakistan. Activists have petitioned the Thai court to protect the right to march. India's Supreme Court says Hadiya's choices of husband cannot be investigated. Burmese military tribunal sentenced soldiers to 10 year imprisonment for killing civilians. Indonesia's Shias community displaced for past six years. Two urgent appeals from Indonesia and Nepal. Welcome to HRC TV's Just Asia. I am Mamila Sampath. This week, Just Asia begins with Pakistan, where police shot dead a 24 year old rickshaw driver on Sunday while allegedly chasing a terrorist. It was later found that the driver, Maksud, was nothing to do with any terrorists or gangs, and the police simply shot him when they could not target the terrorists. Although the police officers have been arrested, no charges have been filed yet. Maksud's shooting on January 21st is the fourth police killing seen in Pakistan's capital city of Karachi this year. On January 14th, the dead body of Dr. Hassan Safar Arif, former professor of philosophy, was found in the back seat of his car with several torture marks. One year ago, he joined banned political party, the MQM Altaf. While social media is reporting that the professor was tortured and given poison through an injection, the investigation has been halted by the authorities. 19-year-old Intazar Ahmad was shot by plainclad police on January 7th, apparently because the son of high-ranking police officer was interested in Ahmad's girlfriend. The police stopped Ahmad's car and shot him 16 times. After much public protest, all the police officers arrested, except the officer whose son was interested in the girl. On January 3rd, a young man, Nakibullah, was arrested from a restaurant near his house and was kept in illegal detention by a senior superintendent Rao Anwar. On January 13, the police officers announced that Nakibullah was killed along with three other terrorists is an encounter. In fact, the police asked for a bribe for his release, but when no money was forthcoming, he was shot dead. In the last two years, 1,360 persons have been killed in the police encounter. Just Asia speaks to lawyer Javeria Jonas for more information. Incidents of extrajudicial killing are symptomatic of a more serious problem. It is the utter collapse of the rule of law. Um, though it is not a new phenomenon in the country, it only came to foray because Nakibullah was a social media starlet, um, having many followers uh, on his Facebook account. His murder elicited huge media backlash and protests by the civil society, forced the administration this time to act. Um, there may be many other innocent victims whose deaths and fake encounters have gone unnoticed. Um, the ousted uh, SSP, um, Malir Anwar Rao, was known as the counter specialist. Um, he was untouchable and he reportedly enjoyed the unquestioned and unbrittle impunity and support from the security establishment as well as the political leadership. Such erring police officers are a product of a system that, has, that sanctions extrajudicial actions. Custodial killing and fake encounters have become the de facto crime deterrent, uh, where suspects, um, suspected criminals, militants, and you know, um, secretarian, uh, secretarian uh, extremists um, are killed not only are killed across the country. An out-and-out -out license to kill makes incidents of extrajudicial killing inevitable and uh, I don't think they will stop anytime soon. I think there should be a judicial inquiry into all suspected encounters. Retrospectively, uh, perpetrators of the crime must be punished. Um, it will help prevent such excess um, use of power and authority in the future. More importantly, however, uh, is to reform the police system that produces officers like Rao Anwar. His impunity came from the political patronage. Um, I think the government must put judicial and monitoring system in place and that there should be a public oversight committee of uh, all police actions, particularly police access. And um, I believe no one should have the impunity to use power indiscriminately and you know, no one should be above the law. Moving to Thailand, right activists on Monday petitioned the administrative court for an injunction against harassment of their Solidarity Walk activity. The People Go Network launched the V-Walk Solidarity Walk from 20 January to 17 February 2018 for raise public awareness on issues concerning natural resources, 
alternative agriculture, health assurance and the exercise of right and freedoms. The Thai authorities, however, have repeatedly tried to disrupt the walk by arresting and detaining the group members, blocking their march and threatening to charge them with the violations of banned political gathering of five or more persons. The People Go Network is made up of various groups and individuals concerned with food security, community rights, health rights and civil rights. For more information, HRC interview Mr. Surachai Trungam, a senior lawyer representing the People Go Network. ตายสวนไอ้คําร้องเนี่ยโดยฉุกเฉินนะครับก็ศาลก็มีคําสั่งสั้นๆนะครับว่ายังไม่มีฉุกเฉินไอ้ที่เราจะขอให้ตายสว
to be developed in the area of Talang Mountain, West Sumatra Province. The area is protected forest area and the local community is concerned about the environmental damage. Not only is the company ignoring their concern, but the West Sumatra police are harassing community leaders advocating environmental protection. In Nepal, 15-year-old Muni Paswan Das was struck by a police officer with a bamboo stick, resulting in serious injury to her left eye with possible total loss of her vision and surgical extraction. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on these and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.lrc.asia forward slash justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.